Transformation Today with Victor Adiemi. Welcome to Transformation Today. I'm Victor Adiemi, excited to welcome you to this program. The subject of effective prayer, because we've discovered how crucial prayer is to every Christian life. And with me on the program to continue to discuss the subject is the pastor of Global Harvest Church, Bodija Ibadan, Pastor Jude Ujomo. Pastor Jude, you're welcome to the program once again. Thank you very much. Um, you are a man of prayer, and that is one of the things I love very much about you and celebrate about you. Um, we began to discuss the subject of effective prayer last week, and um, we were able to touch on a number of important things, mm -hmm. and we want to continue today on this very wonderful subject, and we are trusting God that our viewers at home will be enlightened, and that at the end of the program, we're going to pray with you, and your prayers will certainly be answered. Amen. So call family, call friends, get everybody together. Let them know that we're talking about effective prayer on transformation today. Sit back, relax, enjoy yourself. We'll be right back. Transformation Today with Victor Adiemi. Welcome back. This is Transformation Today. And I'm Victor Adeyemi. I would be on the program. I have Pastor Jude Ujamo. Once again, you're welcome to the program. Thank you, sir. Now we want to dive into the program today. Uh, last week we began to discuss from Matthew chapter 6 yeah. the importance of prayer protocols, yes, uh, finding a quiet place, yeah. concentrating on the place of prayer in order to get results. Yes, we touched on the importance of the name of Jesus, yes, how that Jesus is our actors. Our password, you called yeah. it last <laughs> week, uh, into the presence of the Father, into the throne room of the Father. We mentioned the, how that it is through the word of God we nurture our faith yes, also, that it's imp it is important mm -hmm. that we approach the presence of the Father with faith, mm -hmm. with confidence in God. Now, today we want to continue uh, looking at this important subject because in that Matthew 6 you mentioned, the Lord Jesus also said we should beware not to be like the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, the Pharisees use uh, many words. Jesus called it vain repetition mm. in prayer. What is vain repetition <laughs> and how can we avoid vain repetition so our prayers can be effective? All right. It, it's interesting that um, our, our thinking is always that there is a way we will do it that God will hear rather yeah. than how God wants us to do it so that he will like hear. Yeah. <laughs> so vain repetition has to do with breaking down the word, repeating what does not have effect. For instance, yeah. somebody just saying things like, uh, do it, Lord, 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 do it, Lord. <laughs> we have a lot of that uh, uh, going on in our country. Exactly. For somebody to just start, you know, saying, do it, Lord, do it, Lord, do it, Lord, do it, Lord, do it, Lord. <laughs> uh, maybe the feeling is that if I say long, long enough, enough. Do it. yeah, that, that's the feeling, thinking <laughs> I need to say it, which was what Jesus was condemning in what wow. the Pharisees were doing. And he was telling them that's a wrong protocol. <laughs> the way to go about it is that even before you ask, your father knows that you have need, need of, of these things. Yes. So vain repetition has to do with saying the same thing, not out of faith, out of just saying it for the sake of speak, using words. Oh. Basically using words like I just gave an, an yeah, instance yeah, yeah. and we have a lot of it that goes around in this place. Yeah. So that was what the Pharisees were doing and that was what Jesus was condemning. So wow. those are some of the things that... So we should not depend on our book book. repetition and using the same words over and over again to mm. get God to answer. Yeah. We should rather depend more on his word. Yeah. He, he has promised to answer us. So yeah. We should have confidence in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Uh, so we can get answers to our prayers. Mm. And, and I think yeah. also, I think also is the fact that uh, you mentioned in the last episode yeah. where people think it's when they use King James language. It's that, it's, oh Lord, oh. unto thee comest <laughs> I today, thou who gatherest thy children with thy love. <laughs> because I was mentioning on the program last week that it's important that people are real before God. God yeah. wants you to be real, yeah. to be yourself. Yeah, so the King James language does not necessarily add to the efficacy of the prayer. Oh. 
Uh, 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 so, uh, someone said it's the language of God. I don't know where they got oh, that from. <laughs> it was the language of King James of England. Of, of England. Exactly. Mm. Now, um, you've talk, touched on vain repetition, but the Lord Jesus Christ also seemed to touch on uh, motives when he said that the Pharisees like to do it to be seen oh, of man. men. Mm. So is it possible that uh, I might go to the place of prayer and sweat it all out to impress people who are watching me. Mm. And, and I want to look like I'm really spiritual. And so uh, I'm shaking my head, I'm pacing back up and down, and really sweating it out that people may see that, whoo, this mm. is really impressive. Mm. I think the other side of it is to even try to impress God himself. <laughs> One lady told me many years ago, mm. said, I was so desperate about the matter. I removed all my dress. I was mm. naked before God, wow. like I was. Wow. For God to really know, yes, <laughs> I need business today. Another guy told me, he mm. said, I went on the mountain to pray. Mm. The rain began to fall. <laughs> the more he fell, the more I said, yes. <laughs> I'm going to suffer in this rain. <laughs> that God himself, when he looks down from heaven at my suffering, <laughs> he will know all. I've got to answer him. <laughs> Are you trying to say all these things? I'm not bearing with how effective prayer is. You know that what is crucial in the place of prayer, like we said last week, faith is of paramount importance. importance you know, it's not about the fact that you, you stand at attention or you are rolling on the floor. I've heard people say uh, you, when, you, when you kneel on a mountain, mm. on the hard rock, mm. you're going through a lot of hardship mm. that God would respond. Wow. I remember an incident I had once. I, I, I had to go pray somewhere with some people. Mm. And when we were praying, there were mosquitoes there. Wow. So I, I stopped to, to kill the mosquito. And a brother yeah. said to me, no, 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 you don't do that. That when you are praying, yeah. if all those mosquitoes and things come, it's, it's the devil that's trying to hinder your prayer. Seriously? And that will distract you. And I said, wow. Seriously? Because I didn't understand. I thought he was saying the right <laughs> thing. <laughs> it, it, to be it's seen of men. what people do in prayer. <laughs> in prayer. And what they do to be seen of, of people. Men, yeah. And at times, even hoping that they will be seen of God. God has been mm. serious by their hardship. Mm. That sounds very much like the ascetists of the, of the early church. church. Those guys felt that if they punish themselves mm. very well, mm. then they'll be accepted by God. God. That it, it is just absolute <laughs> spiritual <laughs> ignorance mm. uh, to behave like that. Mm. Mm. However, the Lord Jesus Christ, when he taught, you know, Mark chapter 11 is a mm. fantastic uh, verse of scripture, mm. uh, verse 24. What things ever you desire, when mm. you pray, pray, believe that you receive them, mm. and you shall mm. have mm. them. Um, reading a verse like that makes me feel anything I just want, mm. I can ask God for it. But mm. then um, another verse of scripture, First John chapter 5, verse 14 says, and this is the confidence that we yeah. have. If we ask anything according to his will, mm then he hears us. Mm. How can I know the will of God? Mm. In fact, I remember Kenneth E. Hagin say, faith begins, I, he used to say when he was alive, faith begins where the will of God is known. Mm. How can I know the will of God so that I should know what to pray for and what not to pray for? No. I think expressly the word of God shows us what the will of God is. Okay. Once we look at God's word, we know where to go to and where not to go to. For instance, you, you can be praying for God to give you a, a life partner yeah. and you are asking for somebody else's spouse. Oh, That can't be the will of God. <laughs> you, you can't say you, you had a dream, That's you right. saw somebody else's wife or somebody else's husband yes. and you say you desire it and because the Bible says whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, pray believe. You believe you now begin. That's not the will of God. That's covetousness, That's right. which is against the word of God. That's right. And then, of course, as God's children also, we have a witness of the Spirit in yes, our heart. Sir. There are certain things we begin to pray about, and we know that, look, this is not what God wants for me. Mm. For instance, somebody wants to get a job. Yeah. He looks at one that pays much better yeah. and looks at the other that doesn't pay as much. Yeah. But then in the place of prayer, right. he just knows that, look, I have more peace about the one that doesn't pay as much. Wow. Even though there is more money here, right. but there is the peace of God on Hallelujah. the other one. Yeah. If we'll be sincere with ourselves and follow the will of God yes, and sir. pray effectively, that's where our breakthrough will be. Wow, this is wonderful. So the will of God for me 
can be revealed to me through the word of God. Yes, sir. When I read the Bible, I know the will of God. Yeah. God will not contradict himself. His word, no he way. cannot want for me mm. what he has not said. It's mine in the scriptures. Scripture, yes, so I need to read my Bible and find out what is mine. True, sir. And claim what is mine. What mm. is not mine, I mine. ought to live alone. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. And then also listen to that peace of God in my heart. Oh, so if I'm yeah. praying for a wife, mm. not every daughter of Zion is no. my wife. <laughs> no, no. I need to follow God's <laughs> peace. And mm. choose the one that I have peace about. Oh, I choose the one that is God's will for me. Mm. Viewers, I believe you're enjoying mm. this. For effective prayer, we need to pray in the will of God, mm. not with vain repetitions. Mm. We rather need to pray according to the will of God. It's getting more and more exciting, and mm. we have more to share with you on transformation today. Don't go away. Sit back. We'll be right back. Transformation Today with Victor Adiemi. Pastor Victor Adiemi would like to hear from you. Please visit our website, www.victoradiemi.org, or call the numbers now showing on your screen. Prayer partners are standing by. You can request a copy of today's message or give to support Victor Adiemi Ministries' outreach efforts around the globe on our website, www.victoradiemi.org, or by calling the numbers now showing on your screen. We like to get social. Connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Transformation Today with Victor Adiemi. Welcome back. This is Transformation Today, and I'm your host, Victor Adiemi, and um, I have been hosted on the program, Pastor Jude Ujomo, this cousin, Effective Prayer. Pastor Jude, you're welcome back again. Thank you very much. We left off on this subject of praying in the will of God, God yes, following the word of God, and following the peace of God in our hearts. Mm. But Mark 11, 24 again. But things whatever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. And in the next verse, if you start praying, mm. and you have ought against any, Forgive, it says. Mm. Looks like forgiveness might have something to do with prayer, isn't it? To a very large extent. Yeah. Even in Matthew chapter 6, it was the same thing Jesus said to them in yeah. showing them the protocol of prayer. Wow. He says to them, if you don't forgive mm. those who are indebted to you, yeah. then God will not forgive you. Wow. And then that, I mean, we're praying to God anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> if we're praying to so God. <laughs> then I, I don't know. I don't want to be praying to somebody that I know is holding something against, against me. me. Exactly. Yeah. So, so the place of forgiveness is crucial. Now I know some people have argued that mm. in this time of grace, mm. that um, all our sins, since they've been taken care of on <laughs> Calvary's cross, then our act of forgiveness will not have anything to do with our prayers. But First Peter chapter three, mm. um, in the seventh verse, mm. it says. Likewise, ye husbands, mm. giving honor mm. unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, mm. as heirs yes. together of the, the grace, grace of, God. of life. Mm. The one thing that the grace of God does to us, according to scriptures, is that it, it imparts the life of God to us. True. Zoe, it, it is called in the Greek, mm. Z O E. Mm. Zoe, the God kind mm. of life, mm. is imparted to us through the grace of our Lord mm. Jesus Christ. And it says, when you get married now, mm. Both you and your spouse mm. are hands together mm. of the grace of this life of God. Mm. Uh, and then it says, as hands together of the grace, grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Mm. So if mm. I, as a husband, does not give honor to my wife, I mm. treat her anyhow, mm. and I allow strife in her home, mm. that means it can be a hindrance, isn't it? Very true, sir. Very, wow. very true, sir. And I think it's not just... That the, the marriage institution is such a strong bond yeah. that that part of us not forgiving hinders our prayer, especially for the men. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I think it's the same thing for everyone that wants to approach God in the place of prayer. That's right. We must relieve bitter, release bitterness, yeah. release unforgiveness, release offenses. Wow. They would come. And, and Jesus even says, if you're bringing your sacrifice to the altar and yeah. you remember yeah. that your brother has ought against says, don't bother coming. Drop it there and go and make amends with your brother. So I, I think forgiveness is key because... That's, there are two areas to this mm. because one area says 
I mean, in one place, Jesus said, if you have ought against any, you're yeah. offended against somebody. Mm. In another one, he says, if you remember somebody has something, something against, against you. you. So whether I have something against somebody or somebody has something against, against me, me, I should do everything in my power to resolve, resolve conflicts it. with yeah. people. Yeah. And make sure I'm at peace with people for yeah. an effective prior life. Yeah. Yeah. Because there are times when some people say, uh, well, I don't have anything against him. <laughs> I don't have anything against him. People, mm. he has something against you, and you really don't care. So it's mm. important whether you are the one that has something against someone, or the, mm. or someone has something against you, mm. that you do your best to resolve it for yeah. an effective prayer life. Yeah. Wow, mm. that's very interesting. Mm. Uh, so this issue of uh, forgiveness does it translate into? Um, people who, what do we do with people who are, who are sworn enemies, who are irreconcilable? Mm -hmm. uh, what can I, can I do if, if, will God still hold it against me if somebody has sworn not to reconcile with me? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think one of the things that we shouldn't do yes. is not to ask that they fall down and die. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I think it's not, it's not one of the things we should do. Oh, you mean when I pray, <laughs> God kill the people who hate me, hate me. or kill my enemies, mm. that does not look like it's a biblical prayer. It's not. I, I don't think it's biblical mm. because the life that we've been imparted with, like That's you said, right. is a life of love. Mm. And, and Jesus specifically tells us yeah. to pray for those who despitefully use us. Wow. So it means, it, 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 even, it even tells us that if our enemy should ask us for water, we should give them. Wow. So in the spirit, God uses the water to do something else, but our own responsibility yeah. is to continually show love. So if somebody is sworn to always harm us, our responsibility, even if it's impossible, to go and physically reconcile with the person, yeah. we must ensure that in the spirit, we show yeah. love towards and them bear no and bear no grudges at all. Uh, because yeah. it is a major hindrance to effective prayer. In James chapter 5, verse uh, 14, of course, you know it says, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the mm. church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. In the next verse, it says, Confess your faults one to another mother. and pray you one for another mm. that you may be healed. Mm. So, if we confess our faults to one another, mm -hmm. we, we make amends, then healing seems to follow that. And yes, I believe sir. that our faults yes, there include our offenses against mm -hmm. one another. Bitterness. Healing will certainly follow it. Yes, so yes, uh, uh, people will get their prayers answered mm -hmm. uh, 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 quickly if they can confess their faults to one another. Mm -hmm. I'm reminded of a particular story. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when I say story, it, this, is something, this was something that happened that I was a witness to. Many years ago, mm. uh, this was uh, like 20, uh, probably 20, uh, 25 years ago now, wow. uh, wow. in the Lone State. I was a mm. young minister, mm. uh, and uh, myself and a friend were mm. invited to a particular home mm. where their son was ill, mm. and it was apparent that it was a spiritual problem mm. because the boy saw invisible forces beating him, wow. and he had not been able to sleep well for wow. several days. Wow. And nobody could do anything about it. And we went to this home and prayed for the child. Mm. Right before my very eyes, the child would shout. Mm. And he was being beaten. And there were signs on his body that he was being beaten. Mm. We couldn't see who was beating the child. When we prayed, with, when we prayed without success for a while, then a, a brother that went with me, my friend that went with me, you know, it was, you know, it was revealed to him. He received the revelation mm. that there was a problem in the marriage of the parents. Mm. Do you know we just left praying for the boy, went and resolved the marital conflict, mm. and that was the end of the trouble. Wow. So wow. unforgiveness often opens, opens doors the doors in people's homes yes, sir. and keeps the devil active there. Yes, sir. Yes, the, sir. The devil remains active in the life of an unforgiven person. Mm. Uh, Ephesians 4.27 says, neither give place to the, to devil. the devil. Unforgiving people give place to the devil, True, sir. and they do not allow their prayers to mm. be effective. Mm. Now, uh, the Bible tells us about Elijah, mm. called, uh, you know, Elias in the King James Version mm. now. In, in the book of James, chapter 5, verse 16, it says, The effectual fervent prayer oh. of the righteous man availeth mm. much, or like the Amplified Translation says, makes tremendous power available dynamic in That's its what? working. Mm. The word fervency mm. seems to speak of passion yeah. and concentration in mm. prayer. Mm. Is that a necessity for answer prayer? I, I think it's, it's a very strong necessity yeah. because even in the natural, yeah. the, the kind of passion a person shows to us an activity yeah. determines to some extent how either the giver or the, the recipient uh, responds. 
So even in the place of fervency, in as much as we have tried to play down on the issues of vain repetition, yeah. we must also know that there has to be fervency. That's right. Paul talks about it in, in, in Romans 12, asking us to be fervent in the spirit, That's which right. means to be always boiling, yes. to be on fire, Alleluia. to be red hot, the translation says. Yeah. So even when it comes to prayer, you need to show that you, you, you have God's promises, yeah. and you use God's promises strong in the place of prayer. So Alleluia. the place of fervency in our pursuit, That's the right. place of fervency in our use of God's word, the yeah. place of fervency in our staying power in the place of prayer has tremendous effect. Hallelujah. Yeah. Meaning that, just like the Lord Jesus prayed fervently at Gethsemane, Gethsemane yeah. uh, I ought to learn to do that in the place of prayer, Very particularly true. if I'm in pursuit of the will of God, mm -hmm. pursuit of a revelation, pursuit mm -hmm. of a divine intervention. Gotcha then I ought not to handle it with levity. Very uh, true. That's Very not true. the time to put my two hands in my pocket and walk up and down <laughs> like a dancer. Flipping through my phone. Flipping through my phones. <laughs> and, and I say, I'm, I'm praying at the same <laughs> time, <laughs> chatting and sending texts text. at the same mm. time and all of that. Mm. Uh, so it's important that when we, I guess it, it boils down again to what you started out with uh, in the last episode mm. about the importance of finding a place and concentrating in the Very place true. of prayer. Very true. Now, the word desire, uh, like we see in Mark 11, 24, what things mm. wherever you desire when mm. you pray. Mm. So it means desire ought to precede prayer. Mm. And to desire means to stretch out for something. Mm. You must really want it. True, sir. If you really want mm. to get it from God, mm. then you must really want, want it. it yeah. And express that hunger and that thirst okay. to the Lord. Very wow. Very I true. guess if we spend the whole day discussing <laughs> prayer, we'll never be able to exhaust it. <laughs> but I want to thank you, Pastor Jude, for reaching into the depths of, mm. of your own personal experience mm. and sharing it with us. Viewers at home, I want you to know that your prayers can get answered. Yeah. You can get 100% of your prayers answered if you will pray effectively. All you need to do is follow the principles of God's word that we'll be sharing about prayer, and you will certainly get your prayers answered. One thing, however, that I know qualifies a person to receive from the Heavenly Father is to be his son. Mm -hmm. Once you have become a son of the living God, just like every child in the natural has a right and privileges in his family, the rights and the privileges of sonship are going to be richly yours. So where you are at home, if you would like to give your life to Christ, just pray this prayer after me. Just say, dear God in heaven, I come to you in Jesus' name. I repent of my sins. I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. I believe you died and you rose from the dead. Thank you for saving my life in Jesus' name. Amen. It's as simple as that. If you pray that prayer, meaning it from the heart, then you are born again, you're a child of God. I would like to pray with you today for God to do miracles in your life. But before I do so, Pastor Jude has a short testimony he wants to share with us. All right, thank you. Bro. This is from Adeyemi. I was playing basketball and fell. I felt a shift in my left knee. Mm -hmm. I told my mom and she has been massaging my leg regularly. But I still felt the pain. I came to church, laid my hands on the knee, and I felt a vibration. Hallelujah. I moved my knees and I felt no pain. Praise <laughs> God. The young man who was going to be robbed of enjoying playing <laughs> basketball because he fell and he hurt his knee and yet Jesus healed that. Jesus can heal anything. He mm. cares about the little details of our lives. So where you are at home, I come into agreement with you in prayer today for your healing. In the name of Jesus, lay your hand on that place where you're sick in your body. And I agree with you right now for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to touch your body. I rebuke that heart condition uh, in Jesus' precious name. I rebuke the paralysis in the body of that person watching me right now. Let the life of God flow through you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. In Jesus' precious name, I rebuke asthma. I command it to go away in the name of Jesus. And that person with duodenal ulcer, I rebuke it. In the name of Jesus, I command every sickness to go. And let the healing power of God flow through you from the crown of your head to the source of your feet and be healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. To God be the glory. Great things 
He has done great things. He is doing great things. He will yet do. Once again, Pastor Jude, I want to thank, thank you. Thank you very for much. For being with us on the program today. And I look forward to having you once again thank you on much. Transformation Today. Viewers, it's been a joy bringing you God's word on Transformation Today. And we sure look forward uh, to uh, same time, same station next week. But till then, keep being transformed from glory to glory. And may God richly bless you. Transformation Today with Victor Adiemi. Transformation Today with Victor Adiemi. Pastor Victor Adiemi would like to hear from you. Please visit our website, www.victorademy.org, or call the numbers now showing on your screen. Prayer partners are standing by. You can request a copy of today's message or give to support Victor Adiemi Ministries' outreach efforts around the globe on our website, www.victorademy.org, or by calling the numbers now showing on your screen. We like to get social. Connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Transformation Today with Victor Adiemi.